Web accessibility is important and often even legally required for the websites that we build. But it seems like something that sometimes we just leave uh, a little bit too late in the stage and do it more as like an audit before we release. But uh, fortunately, there are some really cool uh, automated test engines that we can use to help shift this left and uh, find those issues sooner when they initially get introduced. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP NetMopsis. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at some automated ways to check and test for web accessibility. And I can see that Dave is already improving our accessibility by zooming in. That's right. 200 would be the, the thing we should be testing. OK, so there is this cool thing called Axe, which is a, an accessibility test engine for websites. Um, that allows us to just run through a whole set of automated rules that um, like basically we just point it to a website, it will run through all these rules and then report back to us um, where those issues are with some helpful links on how to fix them. Super cool tool and uh, regardless of which test uh, like web automation framework you might be using for your automated testing, it seems like there's already somebody who's built uh, a fra uh, library that will integrate with Axe for that. So there, if you're using Selenium, there's a Selenium Axe uh, integration that you can do. And here we've been talking about Playwright a lot on the channel lately. So we're going to give this Playwright plus Axe uh, library a try. So we'll get right into it here. And uh, first thing we need to do is there's a bunch of libraries that we need to add. I've already actually uh, referenced them here. So inside of my dev dependencies, I have a uh, playwright test I already had in there. I've added Axe Playwright. So that's the one that um, that is gonna, gonna drive all of this. And then we're just gonna go and create a new test called our accessibility spec. So in my tests folder, I'm gonna create a new file. We'll call it alley spec.ts dot dash spec or dot spec. I guess we'll see if it picks it up. I actually can't remember. Uh, I think it's a dot. Okay, let's do that. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's a different icon now. All right. Yeah. Let's go to a dot. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Okay, so I'm just going to copy in this kind of boilerplate starting point for this test. Actually, I don't need these things. So let's start at the top and talk through this. So first thing I'm doing is just including some things from Playwright. So the browser and page classes that we need and then the chromium piece to launch chromium test which is just from playwright test to describe my test and then the interesting bits that we're going to look at today is the inject axe and check alley check accessibility so i define a simple test here called playwright web page accessibility test and then before each of those tests because i might have a few of these defined inside my test suite here uh, before each of those i'm going to go and launch chromium uh, create a new page and go to this URL, which is the one that I have my application running here. I'm picking on the two weeks ready application again. I thought it would be kind of interesting to pass this through some accessibility tests and see where I've gone wrong with that. And uh, so we inject Axe into the page, and then at that point, it's ready to run whatever tests we, we want to define. And then I think uh, they should have called it Embed Axe. Maybe. But, yeah, but this is basically like just a, a channel of me complaining about people naming things without following metaphors. It's uh, it's definitely our like secondary aspect of the channel at mm -hmm. this point, maybe becoming the primary aspect. <laughs> All right, so the test itself is that we're going to just run a simple accessibility test, and I'm just going to say check accessibility on that page, and we just await the results of that. So. Running this is simple. I just need to go to my command line in this folder here, and I will zoom in there as well. And I just do npx playwright test, I believe, to run this. So it'll spin up a headless browser and run through the, the tests, and I definitely got that wrong. Oh, npx, not npm. So it'll spin up a headless Chromium browser, inject the Axe pieces into the page, and then go and run through all those accessibility rules. 
Um, I do have to save the file as a good starting point. And we'll see if it finds those, and we'll find out if Simon led me in the right direction with naming that test. I did find one test. Thank you, Simon. Not entirely useless. And it looks like it found some issues. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so we get this uh, kind of table or report here saying the issues that it found and what it ran through. Uh, so it says that one of those is that uh, my WCAG to AA contrast ratio thresholds were not met. So there's an issue there. And you're going to like this one, Simon. So that mm -hmm. acronym is pronounced WCAG. Oh, I, I feel like you would approve of that one. I would approve of that. And then there's some other ones that are uh, maybe not as high priority, but it gives us a little bit of a uh, an indication of there are some errors, but it's not really telling me enough information to like, how do I solve those errors? So we can provide a more detailed report here just by changing some of the options that we pass into the test. Um, so here, when we do that right now, I just did check accessibility and I pointed it to the page, but there's also this option here to pass in um, these options. So here I can specify some X options. We're gonna come back to that one. But the one I wanted to show now is that I wanted to provide a detailed report and that detailed report options, I wanted to include the HTML for that. So that's not gonna create an, a report that is HTML, it's just gonna include some of the HTML to show me where the error is. So let's run through this again and see if it gives us a little bit more details as to what the problem is here. I like your prompt. Ooh, yeah, I set up, uh, I forget what it's called. Hmm. Oh, yes. I, oh, my posh, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I do like it a lot better than what I had before. Okay, so this is giving me a little more info now. So it's saying that um, this violation, the, the more serious one with the con color contrast, uh, there's a few places where I've run into that issue. So it's kind of correlating the the three nodes where it found an issue here. Uh, and I guess this is how I'm supposed to correlate back. So the index zero maps to this violations here. So I have those three locations where this is a problem. Uh, and it's actually pointing me to the exact HTML where the issue is. Wow. Um, and if we go look at my initial, or the UI here, you can kind of see when you look at it too, like this yeah. white on yellow isn't really a great That's contrast. Legit. So that's a, that's a valid concern, valid issue. Um, I can kind of go and look and see if that's something that I can fix. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to fix it all the way here, but I did have, I think I had a way to resolve that, or maybe I don't. Um, no, I probably don't, but maybe I could just try a different color. See if orange works a little better. What does that look like? That's still going to be an issue, yeah, I think. Slightly better, but yeah. Let's see if it still complains. I don't think we'll be able to fix this problem here, but it's good to know that there is an issue there, and that's something that I should probably log a bug for and address sometime soon. So yeah, it's still complaining about the... It's still a bit about too that. Yeah, okay. There's still the three violations, but that gives us a, you know, that was not a lot of work, and now we're getting getting feedback that we have some issues. There's some other really simple ones like we're missing the language attribute on the HTML tag. That's one that would be pretty easy to fix. Um, I won't go and do that right now, but uh, there's, you know, it's nice to just be pointed in the direction of this is the thing that you need to fix. Um, and it also gives us the name of the rule here that was violated. So these rules are part of that ax uh, tool set. And if we go and look at here, um, we have the list of all the rules and you'll see that they're kind of grouped into these different categories. So there's the WCAG 2.0 level A and double A rules. These are the ones that I, that are often tied to like specific regulations within certain countries where if you have a publicly facing property, you need to make sure that it is accessible. And these are kind of the agreed upon rules that you need to be able to pass. 
Um, so they're all listed here and there's the color contrast ones. So I can actually click on it and then get details. A very uh, good write-up about like how to fix the problem, why it's important. Uh, very well, well written documentation here on what those rules are and gives you a, a good way to, you know, you're not just, you don't just get an error code and no way to solve it. You get a, some really good documentation in terms of how to solve it. Um, so the other piece that I had kind of, I said we would come back to here is this axe options. So this piece that I kind of left empty here. So right now I actually don't know which tests it's running. I, I guess I did show it was the WCAG 2 ones, but uh, what I might want to do is actually specify specifically which ones I want to target. Uh, so that's something that I can specify within the ax options. So I can say run only and tell it that specifically the rules that I want to run. So I can tell it um, like by rule name, so I can give it just the list of rules that I want or the list of tags. So I can say type tag and I can get the values of, of the ones that I actually want it to run. So I can tell it uh, specifically, make sure I type this in right. So the WCAG 2A and WCAG 2AA rules. So I can tell it to run all the rules that have those tags on them. And that will probably be very similar to the results that I had already. It actually might. Yeah, it looks like it trimmed a couple of those rules. It did, yeah. So some of those less serious ones, it trimmed for me. Um, so it's, yeah, having that language attribute, for example, it's not caring about right now. And then the other one that you could do, or another one that you might want to do, is this best practice tag. Let's just see if that gives us some different results. So when this runs, it just scans like whatever the page is that you happen to be on. Yeah. So if you wanted, it doesn't crawl the site. So if you right. wanted to, um, if you wanted to do like the whole site, you'd have to list out the pages that you want to point it to. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a, a like more sophisticated build process, what you might do is um, determine which pages were affected by the current check-in, the current pull request, and then only run the the test against those pages that changed. Oh, if you have that not. ability to determine what did change or you just run it against the whole site um, depends on really on the size of your project if if that's something that's feasible or not so, um there was there is another thing that i wanted to kind of point out as a something that's just still in the works is it would be nice to save that report out as like an html report because axe has that ability to to give you a detailed violation report in HTML form that has like a little image of what the screen looked like along with all the violations and all the tests that passed. Um, so there's a pull request on this Axe Playwright uh, repo right now that um, looks to enable that uh, possibility, which is a, I think would be a nice addition to this uh, package if it could do that. Um, so what I what I like to see is like you run this with every pull request, and then when there's violations, you attach a report to the pull request or to the build showing here's all the things that all the violations that you need to resolve. And then you actually don't let the pull request go through until those violations are fixed. Yeah, so that's that something that I hope gets merged soon. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of all I had for today. Oh, I did have a couple other links here. I'll include these all in the show notes, uh, but just showing some more of the the documentation. So. Uh, that those axe options, there's actually a whole bunch of things that you can pass in, and um, there's links here to to what those options are that you can uh, that you can configure, and the list of rules. So uh, if you're using the latest version of axe, there's actually 95 rules that it runs through, which is pretty pretty cool. Some of them are really simple things. Uh, but somewhere you kind of look at the details of what they're testing and it's pretty impressive that they're able to, to determine that automatically without you know needed person to go through and test the site for you. So, well, it's very exciting. And this is a level of easiness to, to implement that I think should remove some of the barriers around accessibility testing. Yeah, absolutely. If we can make it easy and make it automatic, then... Uh, 
we don't need to worry about it as much as my my thinking on it yeah all right great well unless you have anything else no that's it for today all right well thank you everybody for joining us on today's episode remember to like comment and share and we'll see everybody on next week's episode bye bye